Hello, welcome back to the channel. Right, I'm a little bit excited about this one today. I got this album for my birthday from my daughter Ashley, and it's a very special album for me. It's the debut album by Pink Floyd, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Now, it got the title for this album from the seventh chapter from Wind in the Willows, and it's the Sid Barrett album. Um, a lot of a lot of Pink Floyd fans probably won't know this. You know, some people sort of started off with metal, worked their way through Dark Side, Wish You Were Here, Animals, The Wall, um, and they they don't really know this. I mean, obviously the Harden Floyd fans will absolutely know this, and they'll know it's whimsical, magical, trippy, psychedelic. It is actually a psychedelic rock album, but. Um, there's hints of folk in it and progressive rock too. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. But um, yeah, this is the British release. Apparently, the American release actually had on it See Emily Play, which was one of the singles we had over here. Uh, but it was dropped from the UK release. And um, I named my first daughter Emily after See Emily Play. Um, she was born in May. So anyone who knows about See Emily Play will... No, so, yeah, that's how much I love the first, well, I love Pink Floyd anyway, but, um, you know, there's some classic albums, like I said, Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, The Division Bell even, you know, fantastic stuff, but this has got a real special place in my heart, and there is nothing else like it they've done, I mean, Sid, I'll tell you a little brief story about Sid, uh, but he was only on a brief bit maybe two tracks from their second album, A Saucer Full of Secrets, which I have reviewed. I'll put the little thing up there. There you go. Um, but he went mad, bless him. His story is a real sad one, Sid's, I find, you know. Um, he founded Pink Floyd. He came up with the name of Pink Floyd, and it was his lifestyle. I mean, the lyrics are very trippy. That's because he was on LSD a lot of the time and other psychedelic drugs sent him mad. It's a really sad story, really. Um, but there's something about Sid Barrett. His memory travelled right the way through their career. Without a shadow of a doubt, what happened to him did profoundly affect, I think, Pink Floyd. I mean, I was lucky to see him during the Division Bell concert and they still have the, the big screen in the circle at the back. And it's about Sid Barrett. They always open up with Shine On You Crazy Diamonds, which was written about Sid. So, but anyway, I'm waffling, I'm rambling. So let's get back to this. So yeah, this has got a very special place in my heart for many, many reasons. Um, but I think mostly it's Sid. Uh, Roger Waters done his, uh, I think his first debut was on here, which was Take Up Thy Stethoscope and Walk. But I'll get to the tracks in a little while. Um, I'll get to playing it, but yeah, I've got a few other bits of Sid Barrett, not a lot. I've got this uh, Octopus, it's supposed to be quite a rare CD, and I actually have the Crazy Diamond box set with his free solo album. The Madcap Laughs, Barrett, and Opal, and they're all wonderful in their own right. And I'm seriously thinking about getting them on vinyl, that would be kind of cool, I think. Anyway, I digress. So, shall we open it? Columbia, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, I'm looking forward to this, nice anti-static sleeve, nice 180 gram vinyl, and here we go, look, oh, oh that is shiny, and thick, so, Let's get that one out. It's time to go to that crazy world of Sid Barrett and Pink Floyd. Piper at the gates of dawn. I'll be back in a little while.
Right, here we go. Side one kicks off with Astronomy Domain. That is amazing. It's a massive song, builds up and conjures up all them psychedelic, trippy walls, you know, where all the jellies all going over the walls. You can just imagine sitting at the helm and it sounds incredible. And you know you're going somewhere special with this album. It's a great track and it's a wicked song to start off with. Um, I think it had a working title. And that was... An Astral Chant. Domine, the vocative of Lord in Latin, is a word frequently quoted in Gregorian chants. An absolute corker of a first track. Love that song. And it is one of the classics on Piper of the Gates of Door. Track two is Lucifer Sam. That's got that James Bondy da down 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 with that sound effects all over it. You know, terrific song. Though the lyric ref frequently refers to Lucifer Sam as a cat, some speculation has arisen as to whether this was in fact slang for a hip cat, for a real man, or imagined. In some type of relationship with Barrett's then-girlfriend, Jenny Spires, referred to in the song as Jennifer Gentle, you're a witch. However, Sam was simply Barrett's Siamese cat. Great song. Brilliant track too. And then next up is Matilda Mother. Now, I think Richard Wright sang this and Sid Barrett joined in on the chorus. Um, and I think the lyrics refer to uh, Sid having poems or books read to him by his mum when he was a little child, and the black scribbles are the writings on the book as seen through the eyes of a child. Get in there. I don't think you can unpuzzle the labyrinth that was Sid Barrett. Truly amazing song. Brilliant. Track four, one of my personal favourites, Flaming. Alone in the clouds. I mean... How creative is this? And how, you know, what was his mind like? Lying on an Ida Down, which I think they mention in a few of their songs, Ida Down's Pink Floyd. Um, watching Buttercups Cut the Light and creating all this amazing, innocent, wondrous, trippy, childlike imagery. And it sounds incredible. And like I said, very English so English and very innocent, I guess. That's probably, the, I don't know how, it kind of has got like a Grimm's fairy tale to it without that impending doom. I don't know if that makes sense. Truly a masterpiece, great, great song. Loved Flaming. And I think it was a B-side to something. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. Track four is a strange one, this one. And it's an instrumental, it's called Pow R Tok H. And apparently, Tok H was an army signaller's code for the TH, representing Talbot House, a club where officers and enlisted men were equals. According to Nick Mason, the original four members of Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett, Roger Waters, Richard Wright and Mason, were present at Abbey Road Studios and watched the Beatles record Lovely Rita from Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Vocal effects and noises similar to those used on Lovely Rita could be heard in Pal R Tok H, recorded next door during the same period. Interesting. Another cool song. Then finally, uh, that finishes side A, is Take Up Thy Stethoscope and Walk. And this is a great Roger Waters debut, if you ask me. Um, amazing song. And the song title is referenced to John 5, Chapter 8. 
Jesus said unto him, Rise up, take up thy bed, and walk. His morbid lyrics are quite unlike anything else on the album. Flipping over to side two, track one. Probably the monster track on this. The ten minute interstellar overdrive. Now this all starts off around a guitar riff. Uh, like descending guitar riff. It's like... Well, you know it anyway. And then it goes. It goes in. And I can kind of imagine this... Like Astronomy Domain is the sort of music they would be playing in the clubs like UFO where everyone was just going mental. Quite something. I mean, it is a long track and you kind of get... But, I mean, with Pink Floyd, let's be honest, no one really thinks about it in track. It's like an album, the whole album. You don't often... I mean, they weren't a singles band, let's be honest, were they? Um, it was albums. And this is a masterpiece. Um, often performed by Pink Floyd, I think. I suppose this and Astronomy are probably the two main songs on here, although not necessarily my favourites. I'll get to that at the end. Um, but absolutely a great start to side two. It's, it goes off, it goes right off and goes out there, and it sort of comes, but how they do it is amazing. How Sid Barrett, be able to keep contract, well, the whole construction of the song was... Mind blowing. Track two is actually one of my favourites, and it's like after Interstellar Overdrive, the gnome comes on. I want to tell you a story. Exactly, about Grimble Grumble. Now, if he weren't on drugs when he wrote this one, but it's friendly, it's whimsical, it's magical, and Nigel Planner, who played Neil in The Young Ones, Vegetable Rights and Peace. Um, he done a version of this on his uh, Neil's Heavy Concepts album. And he did quite a good version too. But I love the name. Great song. Sid Barrett all over the place. Right, track three is the amazing chapter 24. And I think the lyrics were literally taken straight out of the, the book, the Oriental book I Ching. And the same, there's some strange melodic sounds going all the way through it. And it sounds so fresh now. I mean, it's 2017. This was recorded in 1967. Um, it's amazing. If you've got Piper and you haven't played it for a while, play it. Turn it up. I did. It was incredible. Chapter 24 is beautiful. And I think this was also sung by... Uh, Richard Wright. Beautiful song. Right, next up is another favourite of mine. It's beautiful, the way it comes in really calmly. It's the Scarecrow. And it's a strange old song, this one. Like, you know, like, what a sad life the Scarecrow must have. But he's kind of accepted his fate in life. And, you know, that's what he is. And he's accepted that. So I think that's a theme that sort of recurred throughout Pink Floyd's career, you know. But um, beautiful song, conjures up some wonderful imagery. The wind cuts up rough and mice run around on the ground. Where does he come up with this stuff? Bless him. Genius. And it finishes with Bite. I've got a bike, you can ride it if you like. It's got a basket and bell that rings and things to make it look good. I'd give it to you if I could, but I borrowed it. <sighs> wow, what? The first time I heard that, um, and another YouTuber, Alice Plays Reactions, knows very well when. He lent me a cassette tape uh, when we worked at a company together many, many years ago. And I'd only just discovered Pink Floyd and, you know, Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here in the Wall, pretty much. And he lent me a cassette tape with Bike on it. And it's one of them things that happens in your life you absolutely will never forget when you first heard Bike. 
it's crazy. And it's just about a simple song about him and a girl, really, and a push bike. Nothing to it. But there's some very trippy words. And, you know, you're the kind of girl that fits in with my world. Unbelievable. Um, conjures up some wonderful imagery. And I kind of think there's a bit where it sort of shuts down at the big end of the song. I know a room of musical tunes. And then it sort of goes, a door shuts, boom, because there's loads of sound effects throughout this whole album. And a door closes or opens. And all of a sudden it's in a room full of clocks and bells and all that lot. And I kind of think that's what it must have been like in Sid's head. As, you know, crazy. And then all of a sudden you've got these weird, it's like goose sounds coming, burr, 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 coming at you, and like kind of overtaking the room. So that's kind of the only sort of, it's kind of, in, yeah, it's kind of intimidating. I had it on quite loud, but they were coming right at. The sound on, the, on this album is truly amazing. It's so different from the latter Pink Floyd. Yeah, it's so important and so overlooked, I think. Um, it's certainly one of my favourite Pink Floyd albums. Like I said, just for its pure, innocent charm. I mean, it's polished. So it's very polished. I nearly swore. It's very clean and it's all been processed. So the sounds have really been thought out and... I don't know, I don't think it could ever be replaced. So, there you go. Piper at the gates of dawn, done and dusted. Got a lot of memories tied up with this. And like I said, see Emily play, which never actually made the UK release. And I never know why they do that. You know, it kind of, uh, but where would I, you know, where was it on there? Maybe I should sort of track down an American one just to see. It would be nice to have see Emily play on vinyl. So that's about it for today, guys. I finally got to play Piper at the Gates of Dawn by Pink Floyd. And wonderful. Words fail me. Um, it's a shame it's the only Sid Barrett with the Floyd. Um, but, you know, like I said, Sid went on to do his own stuff. He's three before he went mad. And now he's gone, unfortunately. God rest his soul. Also, is Richard Wright now. Bless him. So... Have a time, I guess. Have a time. But yeah, thoroughly enjoyed listening to vinyl again. Thank you, Ashley, for buying me that. It was a wonderful present. Love it very much. And it's going to sit proudly in my collection. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with another ramble real soon. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>